Hey there, and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug Season 1 Retrospective Review. And today we'll be talking about the episode, The Bubbler. And this was one of the first episodes of the show I ever saw. I think it was either this or Evillustrator. And I was just channel surfing one day, and I came across this random show with spandex-clad superheroes battling against a blue DJ who was shooting bubbles at people. And I thought, this is a bit weird, but I stuck with it, and then I watched a couple more episodes when it was on, and, well, here we are. But anyway, enough preamble. Let's get into the episode. So we start off the episode with some premium marinette simp cringe as she wakes up shouting out happy birthday. And at first, it didn't really click with me who the hell she was going on about. And I thought she was just celebrating her own birthday. Until she turns on her computer, and there he is. Adrian. Right there on the homepage, with a collage of him as her background. Oh, goddamn, that's creepy. So, it is his birthday today. And then she tries to kiss the screen. Ugh, what the hell? At a certain point, Tiki has to be thinking that Fu has lost the plot putting her with this crazy person. But we then cut to Adrian, where Plague is trying to present him a piece of camembert wrapped up in a ribbon, and of course, since Adrian apparently buys the stinkiest brand of cheese he can find to feed Plague, he complains about how bad it smells, and tells him to get rid of it. And I gotta say, since every time Adrian interacts with this cheese, it stinks, imagine how bad Adrian smells. He carries it around every day, probably multiple pieces, on his person. Everybody's probably walking around pretending like he doesn't reek of cheese. Oh yeah, Adrian, yeah, that, that sounds great. Oh, God. They're pretending like his locker doesn't reek of cheese and doesn't stink out the entire locker room. After all, we know he has a massive stash in there too. And doesn't he have a drawer filled with it back at his house as well? So, on top of that, his room probably stinks. Poor Natalie. And on top of this... A normal teenage dude going through puberty, they usually get a bit sweaty throughout the day. It just happens. And he keeps his cheese inside that overshirt, right? He's always reaching inside to grab it, so there must be a pocket in there. That pocket would be getting a little bit moist from the sweat, I'd assume. He would kind of stink, no questions asked. And then on top of that, the cheese would mingle with the sweat smell and create this super stinky B.O. cheese odour. Ugh, rest in peace. If he wasn't a handsome model, he'd be sat down by a teacher, or the school counsellor, and told that he needs to change his brand of deodorant. Either that, or imagine how much cologne he has to use up just to get through the day. Back to Marinette, and she's heading off to school when her mum, in a scene that adds nothing at all to the plot, tells her to come back to clean her room after school, with the threat that she'll either read her diary or her emails if she doesn't. And honestly, maybe she should read them. This kid needs to be taught about pursuing a crush in a healthy way. Do your job, parent, please, I'm begging you. But now we're back to Adrian for one of the most depressing scenes from this episode. And honestly, it's one of the show's most depressing scenes in general, where Adrian is sitting alone having breakfast on his birthday before his dad's assistant shows up to give him his daily schedule, or weekly schedule, who knows, and then tells him that his dad said no for the birthday party with no explanation and no reason. It just wouldn't be a good idea. What a truly sad existence this is. Not even going to have breakfast with your son on his birthday? Truly. Old Gabe is father of the year potential. Adrian then vents to it to Nino before school, and Nino, despite knowing that Adrian's dad is borderline abusive, actually get rid of the borderline, he's abusive, takes it on himself to insist on having a party. Oof, not great advice, but I'll give him a pass for being young and naive. And then he says he's going to be the one to go and talk to him about it, which is an even worse idea. This kind of stuff never ends well. And meanwhile, Alia's trying to psych up Marinette to give Adrian a present, but she keeps chickening out, until Alia forces her hand by pushing her away, and of course, she weirds Adrian out with her stuttering and her awkwardness. And then Chloe arrives, and for once, she actually gives her a chance to finish what she's trying to say, which I did find amusing. And it's only when it's clear that it ain't happening that she pushes her out of the way, flirts, and then kisses Adrian, and he looks very uncomfortable. And then off he goes, and Nino gives Adrian a punch of, I don't know, solidarity. A typical, good one, man. A girl totally likes you. Even though Adrian seemed a bit uncomfortable with the attention, but whatever. Off he goes to a photo shoot, and Marinette looks like a failure, as per usual. And Sabrina has to fork out on a gift within immediate delivery day. Whew, that's expensive. Poor Sabrina. We then skip ahead to later on in the day, where Marinette and Alia have made their way to Adrian's house to drop off the present. But after she drops it off, she realises she forgot to sign the card. <laughs> Damn. If I was Alia, this is where i get off the bus. It's like, no, stop it. I can't handle you anymore. It's actually pure torture. 
How can she be so bad at everything? Anyway, inside the house we see Gabe ask Natalie who it was at the door, with her explaining it was a classmate of Adrian dropping off a present. And we then have the reveal that Gabe didn't even bother to buy his own son a gift for his birthday. Woohoo! Good parenting. Oh, and he also didn't even think to ask Natalie to go out and get one. Even though he said he did, and then yells at her. But yeah, even more father of the year shit right here. It's actually really quite heartbreaking to see how little he seems to care for his son, especially in season one. What would Emily think, mate? Whew. And then Natalie decides to totally screw over Marinette and decides to use her present as a gift from Gabe. <laughs> and it's at this point that Nino turns up to enact his harebrained scheme to try and get Gabe to throw Adrian a party. And despite getting a no, Nino persists and lists all the things that Adrian does for Gabe. And honestly, for someone that's fighting against an abusive dad, he's actually pretty polite about all this. But regardless, since Gabe is an asshole. Nino is banished from the house forever, and Natalie shows him the door. So, he didn't wish his son a happy birthday, he refused to throw him a party, he forgot to get him a present, and now he's trying to ruin his relationship with his best friend. What a caring and devoted parent. Nino then goes to sulk in the park and play with his bubbles, and rants about how much adults suck, which of course gets him akumatized into the bubbler, whose powers he uses to abduct all the adults in Paris so that children can live free. God. And imagine how traumatizing this shit is for all the little kids in the park. Just abandoned, their parents sucked up into the sky, sent into space to die. Whew. Anyway, Ladybug transforms and off she goes, whilst Bubbler's rounded up the class and has taken them to Adrian's house to party non-stop at gunpoint. Well, at bubble point. Back inside the house, Plague for some reason decides that Adrian doesn't need to worry about the akumatized villain at this point in time, because he's getting the party he always wanted. I can't believe Plague actually manages to convince him. Like, from Adrian's perspective, I get it. He's starved for any sort of social interaction with his friends because his dad's abusive and keeps him isolated. But Plague, come on, man. What would Master Fu say? And so Adrian goes off to the party, and I gotta say, I love that Nino's still such a good friend even as a supervillain. He even tries to wingman him with a slow dance, and I mean, yeah, it's with Chloe, but it's the thought that counts, right? Of course, Ladybug arrives, she gets jealous, wastes her lucky charm to create a record to stop Chloe and Adrian dancing and prevent Chloe kissing him. You know, standard superhero stuff. She transforms back to Marinette and joins the party to get Tiki some cookies to munch on. And when given the choice between continuing her relentless pursuit of Adrian and fighting Bubbler, you know, the villain who's kidnapped all the adults, including her parents, she flakes out and goes with Alia to try and sign her present. Come on, priorities! And this, of course, gives Bubbler more time to keep oppressing her classmates. Side note, though, what the hell was Ivan thinking, standing up to the supervillain? Grow a brain, you dumbass. Anyway, she finally transforms back and interrupts Adrian's awkward hype speech to shut down the party and battle the Bubbler. So they battle, Cat Noir runs off to transform and feels a bit guilty, and you know what, fair enough, he probably lingered at the party a little too long, and the pair end up getting bubbled and shot into the sky, and of course, they use Cataclysm to free themselves instantly, and then they return. Instantly. So yeah, that was kind of pointless filler designed to pad out the episode, wasn't it? Bubbler then gets mad, he calls the rest of the class haters, and he bubbles them, and then the battle resumes. But this time, there's even more stakes, because he's sending them into space to kill them. Bit of an overreaction to people getting upset you kidnapped their parents and are forcing them to dance non-stop, but okay, you do you. They go on a chase, lucky charm, get a giant wrench, they use it to get a steam pipe to turn into a steam gun to blow away the bubbles and take his wand, and you know what, this was actually clever. Some of the lucky charm plans are plot armoured bullshit, and you know it, but this was well done. I liked that. It made sense, and it didn't seem completely ridiculous. And as always, deakumatize, they revert everything, and then Hawkmoth screams into the void. And we finish the episode with Natalie tossing Marinette's note into the trash and saying that the gift was from Gabe, and Marinette just letting Adrian believe this because he seems so happy. You know, and that is nice, except Gabe's a piece of shit and he doesn't deserve it. <sighs> so yeah, that's the end of the episode. And honestly, I'd say this is one of the better ones I've seen from season one. It's actually quite enjoyable. Even if it is a little stupid, it's still fun. But as always, these are just my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of this episode, if you've watched it recently? You like it, hate it, somewhere in between? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.